Hello and welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. Jay Williams was considered the best college basketball player to come out of Duke University. In 2003, he was about to rise to start him with the Chicago Bulls when he suffered a near-fatal motorcycle accident. He woke up to years of rehab and comeback attempts that ultimately gave way to drug addiction and suicide attempts. Now he's written a book about the experience. Life is Not an Accident, a Memoir of Reinvention. Thank you for being here. Very inspiring book. Very inspiring book. Thank you so much. All right, so let's break it down. Uh, take me back to 2003. What happened? Uh, it was one of those years where I got easily lost into the glitz and the glamour of what the NBA was able to provide. And, uh, you know, when I, my stint at Duke was very sheltered. We were kept in the bubble pretty much. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, look, I lost 13 games, Manny, my, my three years in college. I lost 13 games in my first month of the NBA. And not only was it losing, but guys seemed to not care about losing. And, you know, guys talking to women throughout the course of the game, guys doing drugs throughout the season. And eventually I got to the point where I didn't care. And uh, it took all but a year for me to become a shell of myself. And that eventually led me to becoming extremely rebellious. I had a lot of conflict with my parents, and I wanted to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And uh, that's what money did to me, and right. it changed me, which led me to get a motorcycle. Um, once the accident happened, of course, now you got to face uh, rehab. Um, mm -hmm. And so what was the hardest part of all of that? Well, I completely dislocated my left knee. I tore my peroneal nerve, which allows you to pull your foot up and down. Mm -hmm. I severed my pubic symphysis about 13 inches, you know, very similar to when a lady has a child. Um, the, the most damaging injury that I had that didn't allow me to come back and play was me not being able to pick my left foot up because I had drop foot, and I still do to this day. I had a tendon transfer where they cut the tendon off the inside of my foot, put it to the top. So when I walk, I think about pulling my foot inwards, which pulls it up. So I had to teach myself how to walk again. But the most debilitating injury was me having nerve damage in my pelvis area because you know, it took a year and a half for me to be able to get an erection again. And that was humbling more than anything. The chances of me having a kid were slim at that time. Uh, and that's when painkillers come in. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, yeah. painkillers come into this whole thing, um, and you end up in a depressive state. Uh, you know, painkillers had started off with me because I had nerve pain. They said nerve pain is very similar to childbirth. Uh, I felt like somebody was stabbing me in the leg with a dull knife throughout any second of the day where I would start screaming hysterically. So Oxycontin was something that numbed that pain for a long time. Also, your nerve regenerates an inch per month. I had over two feet of my nerve that needed to regenerate. So it was a long process, an arduous one. Um, so I was on it for two years. And then, you know, just not the physical pain, but eventually what Oxycontin helped me with was just mentally facing people. You know, still to this day, there's not one day that goes by, Manny, where somebody doesn't say to me, oh, you... Oh, yeah, you're that guy. You threw away your career in a wreck, right? You were, or fans like, oh, man, you, you, you killed us, man. You killed all of our, us Bulls oh, fans. Man. So people reminded me of the worst day of my life. And Oxycontin for me throughout that time was a way for me to escape that reality. Exactly. Numb them out, too, and blur the conversation. So how do we, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, y y basketball took you to this zenith of popularity and success. It, you didn't pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. Life came, brought you down. So how did basketball kind of bring you right back up again? Well, basketball didn't bring me up. And what I try to tell people is that you know, every successful company has a board. There are people that the CEO needs to answer to. And when he answers to them, they also help him brainstorm on how to make the company better, more successful. Right. Why don't people look at themselves the same way? So I ask people all the time, who's on your board? You know, is it a board of negativity? Is it a board of people that actually hold you to a higher standard than you hold yourself to? And after my second suicide attempt, I decided to make a board. And I started soliciting people and asking them for their advice, asking them to be brutally candid with me, tell me about some of the, fa the flaws I had. And they were, they were up front. They were transparent. And we started working on things. And uh, I just started to fight to pick myself back up. And I think that's the mentality also that I had from the court because I'm extremely competitive. Right. And I was able to translate that into the bigger game, which is the game of life. What made you write this book? While I was going through my life, especially the last five or six years, you know, I'm a very talkative person, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, and I, I love to randomly hear other people's stories. And one of the things that really became noticeable was that, wow, 
Like everybody's had an accident in, or in some form or fashion. I had a friend that went through a divorce. His wife left him for a hedge fund manager a couple years ago, and he was out of it for a year, a year of his life, drinking a lot, not caring what people thought. His accident. Another right. friend that lost a child during birth. Her accident. You losing your job. Whatever it might be, we all have these things that have happened that can bring you to a low place where you feel like you're scraping on to keep to hold it all together. So my thing is, what makes me any different? There's nothing. I mean, I just happen to be on TV. I happen to talk about sports. I'm just like everybody else. Right. So I was inspired to say, okay, like this is how I got out of it, you know, and maybe this book can help other people get out of their own way as well. I, I think that anybody who's able to tell their story, and again, what is the answer to an accident? Well, you can uh, you can live with the accident all your life, or mm -hmm. you can say, okay, it happened. Let's move on and let's you know, look forward to another day. That's the thing. I think for a long time I was held captive by my accident. I was right. a prisoner in my own mind. And it wasn't until later, Manny, where I was like, you know what? This, this accident doesn't define me, but it's a part of my story. And right. that's okay because we all, we all have a journey. Thank, you, Thank you so much. And the book is everywhere, right? It's everywhere. 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 Right. Everywhere. Go get it now. Thank you so much for Thank being here. Thank you so much. And if you have any health questions, send them here at Fox at DrManny at FoxNews.com. Until next time, I'm Dr. Manny.